So, um, yeah, um, I will be talking about Python in Django and uh, my experience that I've been having for the last two years. And uh, also, as a takeaway, there is a little script uh, with this presentation on my GitHub in order to do all the installation of everything. And I will do a demo at the end in order to show you how uh, this is working. Um, so, who am I? Good old Unix. Um, the good old Unix uh, command in order to see who is the user that I'm impersonating at this moment. Uh, I'm a Unix guy. I've been working for big companies in, uh, in the industry for the last 20 years. Uh, I've been an HPC architect and uh, I was a guy also that was on level 2 and 3 support for Spanish, English and French in Europe for some uh, Linux distributors. So um, basically my experience is more on the sysadmin side and the DevOps more than uh, the, the developer itself. Basically the developer was the one that was asking for the library that wasn't supported and that was the very last that no one tested in production. So uh, I was about to have a lot of trouble if everything was uh, falling and I would have a call at 3 a.m. because he needed it to make it good. So um, this is my uh, my experience so far, and um, I've I've had a lot of uh, breakdown and issues. So the idea was for me to uh, to spread the maximum of things. Um, I would like to know among you how many are using uh, Ruby Rails. Okay, good. Python. Yes. <laughs> Django? Yes. So, um, we can compare things. I like that this thing works. Okay. So, the XKCD um, um, drawing, you will, be happy. you will have more of those. So, we can discuss one and the other and uh, waste a lot of time, or we can just try both of them. Um, so why did I uh, why did I got this uh, this script on the on the way and why did I do all that? Basically, I started my own project and um, I was struggling with a lot of things, starting from scratch. And um, I spent a lot of time, first of all, teaching myself uh, Ruby on Rails, and then going back to using Python and. Um, Restarting from scratch everything after I had lots of bad experience with that, um, especially because of the writing and uh, because of the style and because of lots of things that were very different between uh, my uh, zone of comfort with Python compared with Ruby. Uh, so uh, the idea also is I didn't want to uh, redo everything all the time and go through all the process of. Uh, <coughs> of typing a long list of comments, so I decided just to, uh, to script that. So, why did I choose Python? I guess all the guys that are reading uh, XKC and that are in the Python community have seen this picture before, where um, you see a guy flying and uh, the other one is saying, why are you flying now? Python! I just typed import <coughs> and gravity. And I also sampled the full um, the full meeting cabinet for comparison, but I'm pretty sure it's Python. So uh, that's a joke. Well, I know. But <laughs> <laughs> okay. So uh, why did I choose Python? Because it's something that is already available on any Linux distribution and also on uh, on uh, any kind of Mac or, Mac or Unix system. Um, but the problem is you are using Python 2.7 until now, as it has been deprecated and will disappear on the next version of Linux. You will have now a Python 3.5 that will be available. So you will have things that are coming together from now. Um, there are, it's a language that has, has been exist in existence for the last 25 years. <coughs> You can also reuse it and uh, reuse old parts of Python um, 
you know, all part of other codes inside of it. So, for example, I know some of my ex clients uh, are still using Fortran. Anyone? <laughs> <laughs> so, they are still using Fortran nowadays, uh, calling it in Python. So, these people are in the, the weather industry, they are just doing your weather forecast. Don't worry, it's not important. <laughs> um, so, um, also, there is lots of. Um, there is an, uh, an emphasis on everything that is around clarity and the way the, task, uh, the, the code is typed. So, if you play with. No, not this one. <laughs> <laughs> Almost. So, um, if you play with um, Python just a little bit, let me open the time out for you. Yeah. That will be very tiny. Um. <coughs> yes. Let's talk about Django. That's not the right one. Neither. Better, but not that one. So that's usually what you have when you are doing a Google search, when you are searching for help on anything before you get to Django itself. Thanks, Tarantino, and all the others for choosing a name like that. Um, so, what is interesting about Django? First of all, it has lots of built-in tools. It has an admin interface where you can see all the data that are in the database that is connected to your, um, your stack. So um, through that, you are able to edit things as an admin straight away without having to do any kind of modification. Um, lots of packages are available. I put an address here. So um, like with 
to become shoes since you will have maybe a technical debt afterwards and have something that will be far more complex for doing something but at the end of the day you have a tool that does the job at this particular moment for an MVP that will be clearly sufficient um, when things start to grow you will have to, uh, to run and modify it as quickly as possible in order to improve your your speed. Um, there are plenty of templating options also. This means that straight out of the box you can have a complete project that will be ready with a look and a feel, with an authentication interface, with a landing page that you can create for a user. So um, you don't really need to have Docker or anything else that is good for that. You just need to have virtual AMP that is installed on your computer which is part of Python itself. Um, so, some points. There is a fantastic tutorial with seven parts, which one contains also the integration, which is uh, the chapter six, I would recommend it, but I'm saying that it's awfully useful because you have all the errors that are there. They are just pushing you to do an error, and then after that they are telling you, ah, that way it crashed. So you have now to do that in order to correct it. So read each chapter before doing any part of it. Um, I would also recommend to read Fed 8. It's, um, I will just show you, that would be simpler. Um, it's a style guide for, for Python. So, this, you will have lots of things to go through and that will keep you entertained for a while. Um, as you all know, there is an app for that. So for lots of people that are using IDEs, you will see that there are plugins available that are checking if your code is compliant. So that will simplify your life a lot. Um, Yes, so this way. Back to it. So, um, also something that is very interesting in Django is uh, an app is not an app, it's a project. A project is composed of apps. So, that creates a little bit of confusion in the beginning, but um, when you have created your first project and you are working on it, you know that each component or each substructure that you will create and add will be an app. So an app will be, for example, the profile uh, and the management of the profile of your users, or it would be something that is specific to uh, the project that you are doing. You have these files that you see here, that will be in each of the apps. You will be, you will be seeing the model where you will be declaring all the database model. URLs will be where you have all the different red hair regex where you will have the, the URLs that are treated, uh, the views that are called through URLs. Admin will be also the way that you will modify your uh, admin interface and what you can see and modify through that. And then after that, you have form and tests. Um, I can show you if you are interested um, what it looks like in, uh, in the template that I will be uh, I will be using for the for the MVP. Yes, yes. I like loading. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Nice of being. I'm using atom.io. So here it is. Let's say that you have uh, created a project called My Project using the templates that have been provided. We might have run out of battery somehow. Yeah. 
Okay, so um, basically, as I was telling you before, you have your sort of pad where you have the declaration of all the regex that you are needing. Uh, here you have the home page where you will have uh, the default. Uh, it will be called by um, basis, basically. It will be another view that you will see here called home page. And then after that, it will fall something else called template that will be inside the same app. Um, and so on, you will have all the others. This one has its main page and its main app from the, uh, for the project. There is no reason to have a model on it. That's why you don't see the model of file that I was talking before, uh, talking about before. But on the other hand, if I am looking at account, you will see that I have a model here. That is just an importation of all the other models. There is not much here. The one I was searching for was profile. In that case, I have a definition of the base profile. The, the font size. The font size. Yeah. That would be more, more interesting because <laughs> that's not something that I had. Um, Yes, yes. So here it is. Okay, so um, also one thing that is quite important in my, uh, in my opinion when you are using um, Django or Python or any kind of other system is you want to be consistent with the version of the, uh, the different package of the different tools that you will be using. Um, Python is using pip in order to, uh, as a comment, to have access to all the different packages that are required. Um, you have uh, something that is called requirements that you are putting at the root while you are defining which of the package you are downloading and also up to which version or which version you are using. So like this, even if you are moving to another platform, if you are doing disaster recovery somewhere else, you still have all that that is available to you. Um, what else? Yes, um, for your first test and your first version, uh, by default you will have SQLite that is with it, so you can play with that. Thank you, I will speed up. <laughs> okay, so, Uh, here is the script that I created. Um, that's the name, and that's where you can find it. It's on GitHub. Um, the idea is to have something that is self-contained, that doesn't install anything on the root and on the operating system part that is impacting the, uh, the whole system. So. Um, Create something that you can install on an ARM platform. You can have your Raspberry Pi at home and you can play with it, or you can have it in a virtual environment on your computer, or you can have it also on your data center. On the other hand, in the cloud, it doesn't really matter. Um, so, um, why did I create all that? Because, hey, we all do that. <laughs> So, I will be doing a quick demo here now. <coughs> we open the demo. Okay. So,
It's called a Django NDP install. When I'm doing the first invocation of this script, it will install an MVP RC uh, configuration file. But it's not easy to do things with only one hand. Um, bear with me. <laughs> so I will just remove this file. So remove all um, what I've created before from tests before that. So we are starting really from scratch. They want to take no pressure. So here we are. Okay. So now, when I'm doing my, uh, my launch of my script the first time, I have this. Um, now I can have a look in my scripts. It's very <coughs> simple for, as a script, as you will see. It's just a couple of lines where I define where the directory is. The name of the project, because it will be also used for the for the display of uh, of some information on the web page, and uh, where it's getting all the information. Well, we will call the project a different name. We will call it database, and let's play with it. There you go, and. Now I'm just installing a base system on this Mac and it's downloading everything for me. So it's doing all the installation of uh, a virtual environment in this directory with all the dependencies with Django and um, then after that all the packets that are required for the MVP. Just to simplify the beginning of the whole process and not spend one hour searching the documentation and following it step by step. So also after that uh, it initiates the database and now I just have to create a super user account. I create um, a help system so you can see all the different commands that are available for that. You need to start. And um, so I will just create a super user before showing you what we have. Email address at local post at email.com, whatever. Partner name, me. Password, incorrect. And now I'm doing a run server, which is another command that you have in the, in the document, uh, in the help file that I show you. And I will go again to my, uh, my browser. I can find back that. From here. And one to 7.0.0.1 zero, zero, from 8,000. And here we go. Yay! <laughs> so you have here an about page with some basic templates that have been used. It's some HTML and similar that you can modify by yourself. And then after that, you have the login and sign up system on it that is already available. On this one, it's very simple. There is no social media uh, authentication, it's just a local one. Uh, here, I will be using the account, uh, the account that we created in at me.com. And uh, the password was incorrect. I really typed incorrect. Um, 
And now I can edit my profile. I can upload a different picture on it. <coughs> and um, I can go also to the admin interface that is built in. And I can see the list of all the different users that are available. All that is built in, it's already there. You just have to, uh, to take it, use it. There you go. So, if there is any bug or anything, if you want me to work a little bit more, or if you want to add things, feel free. It's a problem. Thank you. Hey, yes? I see what I saw before that you needed the home for the user. Does that have a problem? Um, that's uh, me that did it like that because I, uh, I, did, I wanted it to be in the, uh, in the place where a developer could work locally. But it could be in any place on the, on the, um, on the, on the hard drive or even on another pass on another mount point. It's just something that I've defined in the, uh, in the MDPRC by default, you can change it. Any other question? Are you all sleeping? <laughs> <laughs>